Good morning, Helen. Hi, Helen. She's looking at me like, why haven't you milked me yet? Hey, Helen. I'm hungry. Good morning, Hope. Hope, it's not even hot yet. You're already drooling, man. Hey, guys. So, this morning's kind of a big day for us. We are moving out to the milk room. And it's a big deal for me because I've been desiring for this to be finished to make the milking job easier for a long time been working really hard to get it to a point where we could use it it's not finished i wouldn't say it's finished because i've still got to do some details but it's got enough finish to make it functional so that way we can actually start doing uh, the milk processing in the room and so i'm excited to use it and to show you guys uh, what we've done so far all right so behind me is the milk room as you can see right here there's not a door yet that's one of the things I need to finish, but that detail is not required for us to be able to process the milk in here. Uh, so let's go inside and we'll take a little tour. I will want to be all turn the light on. Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> you know where the switch is. There you go. There you go. All right, lights are on. Lights for air conditioning in here. Because it doesn't need it. All right, so this is coming through the door, that obviously, that I still have to build. Got the boys out here helping me. They help carry a bunch of the stainless steel pails, strainers, and filters out. So we've got our stainless steel countertop in place. All the plumbing is run. We've got the dishwasher right here. This will be for sterilizing the jars. There's a, our tankless water heater, which is fantastic. Okay, so the benefit of the tankless water heater is that it actually doesn't heat the water until it has uh, water moving through it. And it just heats it up through two different coils um, as the water runs through it. And so the benefit of that is that, you know, on like a regular water heater, it keeps the water inside the tank heated up to that temperature at all times. And because it has to do that, it's actually consuming more power than the surge of electricity required to heat up the water only as you're using it. And especially in this uh, circumstance where we're only using it while we're processing milk for the most part, uh, the tankless water heater takes up less space, requires less power, and is only active when we're using it. It's definitely the choice. I wouldn't go any other direction. Uh, so how that works is once it's wired in and you've got water moving through it, uh, you'll see once I turn the water on, the water heater turns on. You'll see the number turn on right there in the screen. All right, Toby, why don't you squeeze the handle and show them what happens. Over there, water, there you go. All right, see, see right there, the number turns on. That's actually the temperature that we have the water heater set at. It's set at 120. You can adjust that up or down with the little uh, knob right there. You just turn it left or right and adjust the temperature. So right across from our stainless steel counter and sink, we've got our fridge. Uh, we did put a fridge out here because the bottom part being a freezer is what we'll use to chill the milk and get it down to a temperature which slows the enzymes down and helps it last longer. That's about a two hour process once it's uh, done being strained and bottled. And then we'll move it up to the fridge part. The primary goal of having this out here is that we can process the milk, bottle it, get it cold and then store it. And that way whenever we've got friends and family coming to get milk, it actually frees up some space in our house and then it also gives us a place where people can come get milk without having to come into our personal home. Another step that we're, we've got it ordered but it hasn't come in yet so we haven't been able to put it in is I ordered a uh, set of wire shelves that are essentially going to take up this whole space over here to the to technically be the right of the fridge. So the shelving, the reason we're gonna do a, a, a large shelf here is for all the stainless steel pails, uh, strainers, filters, uh, the milking jars, so we use half gallon mason jars, uh, all the lids that are required for that, like a basket for the Sharpies to write the dates, and just the different stuff that we use to, to process the milk and get it from the cow to the bottles and ready to consume. I'm pretty excited to get that set up, but it's not required to be able to use the room. The things that were necessary to be able to process the milk out here was the hot water, because we needed it to be able to rinse stuff out. 
um, to be able to make the soapy uh, water for washing the teats before we start the milking process and the fridge to be able to chill it and store it and so now that we've got those set up we actually are going to use the milking room for the first time but before we start bringing the cows in and getting them milked i wanted to go over a couple other things that you know as i was bringing jessica out here and kind of showing her the space and she's getting super excited about it uh, she's got some ideas for uh, some different uh, let's put it let's say uh, putting her touch on it uh, you know some decoration some some things like that one of the things that she was uh, uh, playing with and thinking about was getting some portraits made of our three Jersey cows so uh, Hope Helen and Hallelujah and we're gonna get some I don't know exactly what they'll look like I don't know if she said they're gonna be black and white or just like really well like really good photos um, but we're gonna get them set up on canvases with frames and put them up on this wall uh, they kind of add like a cool uh, homage to our three original uh, Jersey cows. Um, you know, I'm sure over the years that as we raise our family here, they'll all have others, but those are the three original. And so I think that's a cool idea. Um, another detail is, you know, and a lot of the remodeling I've done, especially at our house and on our farm. So like Jessica's original window greenhouse, a lot of the colors in the kitchen. When we remodeled the kitchen in Arkansas, we've used this color of paint that's like an off-white and it's called glass of milk um, and I thought it was fitting and kind of funny that we actually that's the color we chose to put on the walls and the ceiling here and it's the first time that we've used that color in association with a space that uh, processes milk so I just thought that was funny so this is the look from the door that we still haven't finished from inside the milk room uh, those four posts out there are the new milking stanchion which I will be actually building and shooting a video on after I get done with this one. Once that's done, it will be an even more streamlined and easy process. We'll literally be able to milk, bring it directly into this room, process it, store it, and you know, save a considerable amount of time. Getting into milk cows has been quite the process. We've been on a quite the journey in, in learning and progressing and growing through that process. I'm going to include some footage of the different phases that we've been in. Um, you know, phase one, when we first brought the jerseys home, we didn't have the barn yet. Not only did we not have the barn, but we had uh, nowhere to get out of the weather or the sun. And so we started by milking hope in no stanchion, so no restraints, in a field with no cover and milking by hand. Uh, dealing with her kicking and being able to just do whatever the heck she wants. So that's where we started. That wasn't a lot of fun, but we did that for a while until we were able to uh, move her into the stanchion in the barn. But even when we got to that phase, we had to bring out hot water and or hot soapy water in a mason jar to be able to wash. We had to bring out the milking pails. Um, and then when we were done, we'd have to carry the milk back to the house, strain it, bottle it, and then utilize our house fridge and freezer to chill and store it. Um, still, it's an improvement because we were able to secure Hope into a stanchion. So that was an improvement, but it still was a very lengthy process and it took a lot of effort and really it took, it took some considerable time. Um, we went from there to getting a milking machine, which did speed up the milking process and did give us more milk on average, but now we have to accomplish bringing the milk machine out, uh, still bringing out the hot water, uh, having to then carry the milking machine and now we had two cows so at this point we've added in helen which is why we ended up getting the milking machine when we did so now we're milking two cows having to tote that milk back to the house after it's milked and the milking machine wash the milking machine the milking machine and its parts are taking up space in our house to dry to be used again the next day and then we're again there's the process of carrying all the milk and the supplies back and forth between the house so we, you know, when we built the barn, we knew we were going to be putting a milk room out here, but it's really been the process of, you know, doing it, learning and experiencing it. That's kind of developed the milk room into what it is with a dishwasher, a fridge and freezer, uh, hot water in the sink and the shelving. I mean, I don't think we would have envisioned it like this had we not already had the cows to learn on and see, okay, well, here's what works and here's what we could use and here's what would make this better. So the last phase that we have to go through is the modification of our stanchion. We decided to go with a concrete floor with the support beams being actually concreted into the ground. Um, it's essentially the same design, except the floor is changing 
in the video that I will shoot and release on my channel that's coming soon, I'll go over all the details of why we changed all that. But once that's done and fully operational, the, you know, the milking process will have gone through, like I said, quite the journey of just milking in the field to where we're at today. Um, it's been hard, it's been worth it, um, but I'm excited to get to this place where it becomes efficient. Um, if you've watched our channel for any period of time, you'll know that I appreciate efficiency. And so this is everything I dreamed of when it came to uh, milking the cows. Man, there are some serious bugs in here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and milk the cows and process the milk here for the first time. All right, so you gonna help me? Yeah, sure. All right, we're gonna get the water on. Let it heat up a little bit. Why don't you put a little quart of soap in that jar? Sure. Turn it over. Just it. Okay, hot. Put the jar in there. Fill it up. It's probably good. All right, we need the lid. Got the two cloths. I need the milking machine. Okay, can you carry that or is it too heavy? Okay, I got it. Okay, take it out to West. We'll be out there in a second. Okay. Well, we'll set this up right here. All right, thanks, Sarah. We processed the milk for the first time in our milk room and it was amazing. Um, I can't express or explain adequately how much better and easier and efficient that was. The only thing I have to carry back to the house now are the used uh, cloths that we used to wash the teats. So I think I'm going to do is set up some kind of laundry bag that I'll take back, wash, and bring out the clean cloths uh, to keep that um, cycled. Uh, obviously, we don't have a washing dryer out here, um, but that's like considerably less to carry in and take care of into the house than what we've been doing. One more thing I wanted to uh, show you guys on this video before signing off is, you know, when we bought this belly milker and the way that it works, it actually came with these uh, cool um, drying handles. Um, we've never really used them because we weren't out here in the barn and there was nowhere to set it up properly in the house. So this will be our first time to really use it. Um, but essentially these little handles, you know, you can attach them to the wall and essentially it sets up both pieces of the milker to dry out, to air dry. Um, so I'm going to screw these onto the wall real quick for the first time and complete that. Actually really excited about these because making sure that the stainless steel stuff can air dry is really important and so this is going to be super helpful. Okay, and I'm both mounted. The lid sits like that. And the milker itself. I think that that's pretty cool. Um, the way that it's turned, all the moisture, all the liquid from the inside of the, of the milking barrel will just drip out. So thanks for hanging out with me today and going on the uh, tour of the new milk room and for helping me process our first uh, milk inside. Uh, bless you guys. Until next time.